beginning what we are seeing. This is just like the tip of the tip ice. Of the ice exactly. exactly. Um, yeah, I think, first of all, it was meticulously planned. I mean, uh, you can see that in, in every detail, and the whole thing is uh, really uh, left behind kind of a real, real message of intimidation or intimidating the Western society and bring in what uh, actually Al-Qaeda, ISIS, you name it, had in mind before. This is part and parcel of the modus operandi of uh, groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Basically, I won't say inter-civilizational clash, but I would buy the assumption that this is just the beginning. And we are coming full circle now. I mean, we have been talking about that actually in the recent two yes. years. It was written on the wall, basically. Um, what now we have to just uh, find out is what would the ramifications be? If this is a game changer, so it means that France and maybe Britain and other European states are going to change their modus operandi because the way they perform till now would be kind of a misleading conception, would be kind of a misleading act. So I think it's, a, again, it's a wake-up call. Uh, this is something that comes from the Middle East, generally speaking. Of course. Those quasi-states that were created here in Syria, in Iraq, one time Syria, one time Iraq, in Yemen, actually resulted in, let's say, squads or individuals uh, being inspired by this ideological, uh, uh, radical ideology. And basically, this is, comes to the uh, forefront in the European fold. And I think that this is uh, a new ball game. And I think that, yes, it is just the beginning. It is just the beginning because this is something, uh, Dr. Anata Ogberg Morom, you are always saying that this is just the beginning. What we're seeing is going to get even worse. worse. So uh, today, it's not the end, it's just the beginning of a new chapter because, again, and I'm saying again, it seems that because it's organized, we're not talking only about three people that committed today a crime, a terror crime. They are organized under probably a big cell sitting inside Europe. So I agree with you and a lot more. I would say it's a kind of a turning point in Europe, specifically in Paris, because we haven't seen such a, such a terrorist attack since 2005 in, in, in London. And we may just look at this uh, terrorist attack, I think, from a broader picture, from the big picture. We may see over here a struggle between and among Al-Qaeda and ISIS. This is the first circle. The second circle, which they compete between themselves. What is worse? What is, you know, the terrorist attack, which is the, the worst, the, the, a lot more damage, a lot more killings. It's one circle. The second circle, I would say that this is a competition in order to uh, promote the global ideology for sure, but among the Arab and the Muslim population in France and in Europe at all. I mean, the, the you yeah, know. Yeah, we will take that exactly to this point where it is a shifting point for the Arab popularity, for the right. Muslim popularity in Europe. Maybe when the European, maybe when the, uh, uh, the people in Paris are talking about their September 11, right. it is exactly the September 11 Be of the Muslims and the Arab people and the way right. that the United States, if uh, we are all remember, treated the Muslims and the Arab world after September 11, mm -hmm. like generalizing everyone under the same umbrella. And this is the situation that the Arabs in, the, in Europe are going to deal with. France is the largest Muslim population. We have to take into account that there are about approximately between five uh, to six million Muslims in France. Very fringe of the fringe, you know, minority are the jihadists, which are the, you know, to the extreme uh, 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 Muslims. But if we take into account also here the third, the third circle, which is the Daesh and Al-Qaeda against the Western world, this is again, this is a steep of the iceberg. That's what I, you know, repeating and repeating since uh, for the last few weeks. And I said, this is a wake-up call. We cannot sit and wait. We have to do something which is a lot more than what we have done until today. You know, more than that, it's a wake-up call. You know, I saw a lot of reactions from a lot of people who are living in Paris, from a lot of the French people who are living here, and they were in shock. They were in shock that they couldn't believe each and every action, each and everything that is happening. They weren't able to digest that it's actually happening in Paris, although we are saying that, the, that, that it's already been written on the wall. You know, it's, <clears throat> we saw the same maybe attacks in Boston, right. also fr coming from the community, <clears throat> and in uh, Toulouse and uh, Marseille and, uh, and in Brussels. 
So uh, it's not something which they have to be shocked. And you said, and Anat said uh, uh, right, there's something to be done differently from uh, what is done uh, till today. What, is, what should be done, in my opinion? First of all, changing policy in immigration and uh, how looking on the mind. This uh, Muslim minority, different. As I said yesterday, some of the uh, human rights have to be violated, of course, by uh, all the balances which is necessary in order to gather intelligence, to, uh, to see what is uh, the, the freedom of uh, religion and speech and what is incitement, what is, uh, uh, what is the influence on those uh, uh, cells. And the second issue is how to intercept intelligence, this kind of uh, events. The, se the third circle is uh, on uh, protecting the uh, this kind of incidents and you ask the, the I think the officer which was a very good question how come that it takes more than 24 or 48 hours that they moving from one place to another so he's right by saying that we can't be the police can't be everywhere everywhere 24 hours seven uh, days it's yes, true but still we do have the surveillance we do have the tools in order to follow exactly, them to react quickly to, yeah and to follow the uh, internet again everything is there so uh let's uh, just uh, go uh, now and uh professor Rabi, i believe that uh, you have uh, something uh, to add to this but uh, before you will add to this uh let's go uh, right now uh from paris is uh, david usidon journalist from radio piaf good evening Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us in this uh, difficult night. But we can say that it ended in, the, um, in a good way. But what's now? What's now? What is the next stage? Okay, they were, they were killed. They were caught. And now what? Paris is in shock. People who are the French people are in shock. And what now? First of all, uh, um, it's the first time that France witnessed two hostages taking at the same time. Um, it didn't end that well because uh, four hostages in uh, the cashier grocery store in Port de Vincennes were killed by uh, Amélie Koulibaly, who was the first suspect before the assault. So it's uh, it didn't end up very well. So uh, because I'm asking and because it, it didn't end up very well, but at least they were caught or they were killed. Or, and there is a question if they should have been uh, killed and maybe caught alive and try to understand what is standing behind it. But uh, what what do you think? You know, more than you are a journalist, because uh, us journalists felt really intimidated in the last few days about what we are saying, if what, what we are saying has a price, what do you think that the next stage will be in, in uh, France? The, the the that is a, a big problem because the so the next stage might be the social issues you know in France right now people uh, people are being very scared you know because of all what happened uh, people were on the, very shocked and you when you live in a society that is as much shocked as we had uh, those past days. Uh, you cannot predict what's going to to happen, so it's quite complicated. How did you feel in the last few days? Um, it's very complicated because, you know, um, I, I felt very uh, very shocked. I mean, as I mentioned before, it was the first time uh, in France and especially in Paris um, that we witnessed two hostage taking at the same time. Uh, for we, uh, the news told us uh, the the crisis was going on all over Paris. People, uh, some parents were calling the school of their students, uh, of the of their kids, to, in order to know if everything was all right. I mean, it was a bit of uh, history. Yes, uh, David Osidon, thank you uh, very, very much uh, for this conversation uh, with us. Um, the next stage that we're talking about, the next stage is going to put the Muslim community in Europe in a really big problem. Yeah, I think that uh, if just to follow up on what uh, David said, and I, I, I fully agree, I mean, there are some things that uh, are going to hit the heart of the hearts of what I call actually European mindset. Because it's not basically just what we're going to do with the Muslims. It is how to deal with the Constitution. The Constitution is not actually enabling you to just come up with things by which to violate actually the rights of the individual. Are we going to get into mosques? Are we going actually to monitor them? Are we going to have 
a totally different modus operandi while trying to surveil uh, all these uh, things. I mean, this is something which is part and parcel of a very painful discourse Europe has to go through. The other thing which is on top of that is the whole concept of a multicultural society. This is one thing that Europe tried actually to create or establish in the Middle East. Sorry, it uh, failed Professor here Robbie, I and need it to comes full circle something. to Europe. I really need to understand something because we've been talking a long time about this, because the people in Paris and the people in Europe have been talking about this phenomenon for a long, long time. Do you really want to tell me that it came as a shock to uh, people living in France? Well, it came as a shock to people who are living in Britain. They've been talking about this for years, about the feelings that they have, the, the, the threats that they feel on the streets. Talking, How talking on that is one thing. Having that on the field is another thing. And I'm pretty sure that they are shocked. But this is just the beginning, as we said before, or of, of a very painful process Europe has to go through. This is exactly what I'm trying to Do say. You mean the same process it's that the United States went exactly. through? Exactly. And they have actually to just find the solution to the one million dollar question. How you are going to deal with a messianistic, apocalyptic group like ISIS or Qaeda when you are actually being handicapped by your own constitution. So it is a very, very fierce and painful internal French or European debate for one, for the other, actually what we said, and we should say it loud and clear, the one who left the Middle East for oblivion, those who thought that they are going actually to leave the Middle East behind and let Syria become what it is, this is part and parcel or a byproduct of what happened there. There is a caliphate in the Middle East. There is a quasi-state in Hadramaut in Yemen. What we see now is kind of a byproduct of all this. It's kind of a boomerang. You know, it's amazing because we saw today uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, with the French ambassador uh, in Israel giving and paying his condolences. And it's, you know, it, it's, it was a, a, weird, a weird situation to watch because France was just signing and agreeing on a Palestinian state, although Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu maybe warns and says that you don't know what we're passing here. When you will know what we will pass here, maybe you will start understanding and start feeling and um, living what uh, we, we are living here. So it was kind of, um, what, should we say that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was right? Well, in a way, it's difficult for me to say that he's... Uh, yeah, I know. But, you know <laughs> yeah, in a way, yes, because we are experienced, unfortunately, for uh, decades on uh, fighting terrorism, and sometimes we feel very frustrated by the approach, naive, in um, the, the way that the Europeans are criticizing us when we're fighting against terrorism. So I'm not uh, saying that, uh, uh, of course, we are very much and uh, deeply worried and sorry what's happening in uh, French, and it's, uh, how, uh, it's hurting the French people and also the Jewish uh, community, uh, as we saw today. And we said that it's going to happen. So in a way, and I'm following uh, what Professor Rabbi said, that they will have to uh, get a uh, read so from the politically correct and from the naive way of looking on the phenomenon. I'm not saying that they have to discriminate all this uh, minority, which, as I not said before, it's only the very few which they are the jihads, uh, which they have to be located, and this is the main challenge: how to do it, and not talking about the thousands which are, which are going to come back from Syria, Iraq, after uh, they I, are very well trained. Sure, yes. and I want to follow you to pursue this process. We have to go to the root causes of the jihadism which nobody understands what it is exactly. We are coming from uh, the, uh, you know, the academy, so we know exactly what is the global jihad ideology. None of them know exactly. I mean, the 60, above 60 million uh, Muslims, they are not, you know, they are disconnected from the, the global jihad, as, as all of us in the Western countries. But we do have to, first of all, to go to the root causes, and then to broaden our focus and to add additional approach. And I'm repeating and saying every time, we do have to work very tightly in the internet because all of these attacks, also in Australia, in Canada, two months ago, we don't have to go you know, backward in years. We have to go backward in, in weeks and see what's going on. And it, the, the radicalizations in the internet, in the social media, we have to follow what's going on there and to counter them. That's the way to.
You know, uh, what we are looking right now, it's maybe the revenge that we've been looking, uh, talking about a long, long time ago, and maybe during all this period, because we are saying that the minute that the Syrian kids or the Syrian youth that are seeing, basically, that the West is not doing anything, right. it will come and claim their revenge from the West. And this is Al-Qaeda, not at ISIS. Listen. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 I fully agree with that. Uh, if, if, if just to sum it up, I think that, you know, I mean, what, why, why do I say it's a painful process? Because the West has to be really, really be equipped with a totally different set of tools and insights. Right. First of all, you have to actually internalize the mindset of the other, which the West has, has, hasn't, hasn't got a clue about. Doesn't and, understand. Yeah, and what we are trying to do here is just to make sure that while dealing with the Middle East, and this is something that would be also in Europe, how are you going to actually treat those societies? How are you going to deal with them? It's a long shot. It's the Internet, but it's also the operation on the ground. We have to make sure that we map them out, know actually what the economic lifeline is and where it is going through, and do just the thing. And what happened today was really, in a way, really clever from their part, because they entered exactly. a Jewish supermarket and making it anti-Semitic, anti -Semitic, but it's not. And it's on an the other side, we know that the day that they attacked Charlie Hebdo, it's just they shot a Muslim uh, officer yeah. that told them, right. I'm Muslim, and they told him and still that you're... So, so you so get it, you get it, I mean, they, it's they vicious. They worked in a really yeah. clever Definitely. way, like trying to blow the situation Definitely. that first it's Definitely. First of all, first of all, they damaged Western symbols or French symbols. I mean, this magazine, is part and parcel of the uh, democracy of the uh, let us say liberal world freedom the of second speech. freedom yeah, of liberty speech. of expression the second period. the second thing is this uh, uh, i mean the jewish community and the third is actually the french police which is uh, uh, again kind of part and parcel of the state apparatus and i think that uh, what they are trying to do is again to just send a message we are here and this is again part of the modus operandi. If you are going actually to attack us in the Middle East, if you are going actually to go on with what you are doing there, we have potential soldiers all over the world. I'm not sure that this is Qaeda. I don't know if it is Qaeda or ISIS. It could be Qaeda in the beginning when they were in, in Yemen, Yemen. In, in Yemen and with Aulaki. But oh, Aulaki has been, right. I mean, he was there actually four years ago. What we have now is people who might actually got some inspiration from ISIS. And this is kind of an elaboration because ISIS is an, an elaborated Qaeda. But and basically these that's why people. That's a competition among yeah, themselves. And there's competition. Who is going actually to want the prize of hitting the West in the heart of the heart, right. at the heart of the heart? And this is exactly what we, we, we saw here. Mini 9-11 or European 9-11 I think that I would title that. You that know what? You. What I'm trying to think is, what are the lines of democracy? What? Because we've been talking about, we need to change the constitution. Maybe we need to change the laws. Maybe we need to change the the the, the ability or the, the let's say the freedom that is given to these people in Europe and in Western countries that is allowing them to do what they are doing. And that but, is the problem because you have you have to redeal with things that were taken for granted as, you know, the right. basic that tenets is. of Western reality. Is it a price that Israel, for example, is paying? Yeah, or but I know, or? you know, it's, it's, uh, you can't play in this, uh, in this uh, ground on tools as a democracy, um, which those who are uh, attacking you don't have any kind of rules. So in a way, Israel adopted, I think, a very, uh, uh, um, balance, balance po uh, policy. We are a democracy, and I, I insist on that. Even sometimes we are being criticized by uh, using some kind of uh, methods. But those methods, I think, on the balance, on keeping the security of the people, is something to be, that uh, should be done. And I think the Americans did it after September 11. Maybe they moved too far, as we, we heard about the criticized uh, on, on our. Uh, the, for the uh, all the what the NSA did, the Guantanamo, etc. And on the other hand, the European 
kind of uh, didn't do uh, uh, nothing, uh, not nothing, but very polite, little. Polite, polite. Yeah, very they, little. They were acting in a polite way. Uh, first, I will say uh, just uh, right now that uh, from reports that we're getting, an official uh, from the Interior Ministry of uh, uh, Paris is saying that the hostages were killed, but we're not getting the exact number yet. Um, Before so the assault, I think. They're talking that they were killed before the assault uh, started. They uh, they are not confirming yet the number, so I we don't want we want to be uh, cautious. Mm -hmm. I just uh, want to ask you uh, one last question before uh, Professor uh, uh, Robbie and uh, Dr. Ochberg are going. Um, the social media, which is a big aspect of uh, the re-education or re-understanding uh, the this culture, this clash of civilizations, civilizations. Although you don't want to call it a clash of I wouldn't civilization. Call it no, not yet. Not but yet. not yet. But ha, this this is such an important factor that we're talking about each and every day. And it seems that again we're talking what to the walls. People don't understand that this is the place to start fighting it. Right. We have to broaden the focus to change, not to change, but to uh, have an additional approach. Not only outside, not only airstrikes, no artillery, no tanks in the Middle East. It's not enough. We do have to work very hard to confront the global terrorism in the internet, in the social network, networks, to counter message their messages. Because, you know, terrorist attacks, as I mentioned before, in the Marathon, uh, Boston Marathon, also in uh, Canada, also in Australia, none of them would have done, unless the, the, the internet and social media uh, were so elaborated, so strong, they gave inspirations from each other. The re-education should come from where? From the imams in the mosques, from uh, uh, houses, from people maybe, uh, let's say, uh, the parents, the, the older age right now in Europe to try to re-educate their children and to tell them I mean, what this we is have not to, the way. We, what we have to come up with is kind of an, uh, a, through, a real, I would say, uh, educational revolution. The only thing we would like actually to bring in here is just to respect the otherness of the other. Right. What ISIS, what Qaeda are preaching and teaching day by day, by the way, because they have states in the Middle East. Students is just or, or, uh, that the other is not to be tolerated. What we are trying to say is that the only thing we have to is a joint action by many in Europe, in the world, in the Middle East to make sure that you are going to marginalize them and create kind of a main road where people know that they have to respect the otherness of the other. And basically, I, I fully agree with Anat, you know, it is kind of a multitask. I mean, we have to mm -hmm. come up with an economic warfare. We have to just airstrikes to do this and that. And but basically, to... in addition, right. we have, again, if we would like to have the mindset of the other, we have to be there on the cyber internet. We have to be in their we minds. Either, yeah. We and basically, this it. is what makes Daesh a so dangerous rival, so fierce a rival, because they know how to deal with that. Yes. And this is the 21st century, and this is what is so different from what we had in the 20th century. Yes, uh, David, so you're staying uh, with me uh, for now until the end of the hour. Professor Robbie, thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Uh, thank Dr. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we're, go we're going right now uh, to uh, our studio in Paris, uh, where I24 News International analyst uh, Christian Malad and journalist Jean-Paul Ney. Good evening. Thank you for joining.